The original owner of the house was an Australian senator who traveled through Italy on his way to South Africa in the 1920s. He was so impressed with the architecture of Tuscany that he built a Florentine villa of his own. Taking it back old school and across continents, this house draws its inspiration from a neoclassical Italian villa all the way from Florence. It's the third home owned by Michael Oldfield and Sang Fung since they moved to Cape Town from Joburg. And this is where they celebrated 30 years together. Hi, Michael. Hello, Jade. Hi, Sang. Hi, Jade. <laughs> Welcome to our home. Thank you. The piano reflects Michael's recording industry background and the books hint at Sang's profession as an attorney. Oh my goodness, this dome is like walking into a Roman cathedral. Yes, this house was built in the late 1920s. The dome is probably its most special feature uh, and it's the very high ceiling as you can see. And in fact, all the ceilings in this house are all original. We use this as the main entrance hall but it's also a library and the music room with the piano, so it serves a number of purposes. I see your little dog also features in the decor. Yes, his name is Tintin. He's a wire hair fox terrier. We collect a lot, lot of figurines of Tintin and there are paintings and sculpture of the dog. And we love art. We collect paintings and sculptures. We have a lot of interesting artwork. And one of my favorite is a tiny little old photograph of this house taken in the 30s. Born in Hong Kong, Sang's been fascinated by South Africa ever since arriving here. The collectible I couldn't help but notice is the one down the hallway. Gathering art on their travels, the home they return to is itself a work of period art. Before I show you the sculpture, I want to show you the, the room where we spend the most time, and that's this room. It's an interesting room because the doors are Art Deco and they are original. So, because at that time it was around the Art Deco era. Every room in this unconventional house is different, making it a constantly changing gallery for art, including Sang's Chinese heritage and the couple's love for early and mid-century design. This chair is a Miss van der Rohe who designed it in 1929. We also have similar chairs in the dining room, also by Miss van der Rohe, so they are collector's pieces, so to speak. I love how the Art Deco chairs really complement all the other elements in the room. Yes, both the chairs and the table are both Art Deco. The greenery outside is brought in reflected in the olive green chairs in the dining room. I see it also feature in your house. Yes, we collect jade and Chinese artifacts. Jade is a symbol of wealth in China, and this particular piece is a symbol of fertility. Ooh, you hear that, boys? <laughs> Dinner guests enjoy long evenings under this exceptional chandelier. If the rest of the interiors were once quite dark, the long mirror passage lights up the whole center of the home. Of course, a Lionel. Yes, this is by Lionel Smith. It was a sculpture that we bought and we really liked because we felt it was a wonderful focus for the end of the passage. Uh, there was a key factor in it and that was to build the plinth to the right height. When Lionel Smith himself came to install it, he put it on there and he walked inside and he said, it's the perfect height. At the bottom of the uh, plinth, you see we have a koi pond, which is part of the Asian influence. Everything from the glass balustrades to the wooden flooring contributes to the feeling of the home being an architectural sculpture. Downstairs, there's a gallery of a more liquid kind. Ah, the perfect wine cellar. I trust it's a chilly 13 degrees? Yes, it is. It's good for the wine. You look at the floors and the walls, We've kept the rustic look. We love this room because we can come down here and open a bottle of wine when it's cold in winter and uh, enjoy it. Well, I can see why. Shall we head to the next room? Yes. Today, Michael works in the investment field. And if he or Sang want to work from home, they can. Jade, uh, this room is right below the entrance hall. You know, we use this as an office and we've got our collection of clocks over there which we've collected over the years. From this room, we lead on to two guest bedrooms and they are actually built under the veranda that surrounds the house. So they're not part of the main part of the house. They also lead into the garden. 
this guest bathroom used to be a garage and a piece of lateral thinking envisioned a shower room in the most unlikely of places. Our guests are very comfortable when they stay here, but most of them choose the shower room. They love that staircase and the idea of bathing under the outside staircase. With rooms for visitors so ingeniously created downstairs, there was ample opportunity for the stylish owners to give themselves room up here. Every girl's dream, a walk-in closet. And it's even bigger than the bedroom. <laughs> this is our main bedroom. The wall is a Tom Loy trick of the eye uh, to give you the illusion that it's concrete. The chair over here is designed by Saarinen. It's called a womb chair. After a hard day, it's a perfect place to relax in. And here's the bathroom with a beautiful chandelier overlooking the marble bath with the original checkered tile floor contrasting with the wooden floor here. With this private deck and a veranda running almost entirely around the house, there's plenty of opportunity to admire the garden by Proteus cricketer turned landscape architect Alan Dawson. This garden is absolutely magnificent. What was the brief you were given? The brief from the client was to take the architecture of the house out into the garden, um, to use the shape, hence all the terraces that we created. The other brief was to soften the, the bottom part of the house as much as possible. It was a single story house, um, but they put a, a story underneath and we had to soften that, hence all the tiki creeper around the house going up the stairs, softening it as much as possible. Alan, to me this looks very complicated. There must have been challenges. There were a lot of challenges here. First of all, it was a really old garden full of rocks and rockery, a lot of palm trees, a lot of succulents, which we had to unfortunately pull out. We reused a lot of the old rocks in the pathways that we have here and in the garden there. We just used as much of the old stuff as possible. I've got to ask, how long did the tiki creeper take to cover the stairs? When we put the tiki cube in initially, I had my doubts as to whether it was going to work. But two years later, it had covered all the walls and greened up everything. It was incredible how it had actually grown. Um, and it really has just softened the house so beautifully. Really, it, it, it has served its purpose. So you've got to have patience. Plenty. What would you say is the most outstanding feature here? For me, the best part of the garden is from the roof where you see the backdrop of Table Mountain, you look down and can see the whole garden and look out into Table Bay. I'm going to have to ask the Jays to take me to the top then. Well, I'm sure they'll show you all the views and treat you to something very special as they always do. Like the garden Allen's created, this pool area is private and once the sun goes down, the owners love to sit outside enjoying Sang's cooking, watching the city lights sparkle, and hikers coming down Lion's Head by torchlight. I see why Alan said I have to come up here. Here we have a 360 degree view of Table Mountain, the harbor and the city. What more do we want? Well, cheers to this beautiful city. While they've owned several homes before, they won't easily top this one.